Hi guys, welcome to another webinar by 99's Technology. Today we are going to talk about continuous delivery with AWS Code Pipeline and AWS Code Build. I'm Dishan Rajapaksha. I'm a software engineer at 99X Technology. But what to expect from this session? Today I'm going to talk about what is CICD, uh, giving you a brief introduction about the terms, and AWS Code Pipeline, AWS Code Build, and I'm fin I'll finish the demonstration webinar with a demonstration. Before we dive into continuous integration and continuous deployment, let's talk about what a software release process is. A software release process usually consists of four stages, source, build, test and deployment. A software release process is used to control the deployment of software into various environments. The environment can be staging, deploy, production or even the QA environment. Before, okay. um, if we are talking about the source stage, a source stage is where the developer codes and they usually use version control and they do code reviews and peer reviews before committing and once the reviews are done, the developer commits into a branch that might be a feature branch or even the dev branch and once the com commit is committed into the central repository, a build can be started and the build will compile and it will run the unit test, style checkers, code metrics and everything. And once everything passes, it, the code can be packaged and used in the next stage which is test. And in the test stage, uh, integration test, load test, UI test and all kind of tests are run against the package we got from the build stage. And once everything passes, we can do a deployment into an environment and it may not be the production environment and if it is the QA environment we can do monitoring and we can do validation, we can do accept acceptance testing and everything. And okay. When continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment comes, this is how the software release process works. In the continuous integration, we don't usually do deployments, we just get the source code and build and we see if the build is passing because there can be several developers working on a central repository and they might be working on different different features and we usually want to integrate continuously and see if the build is passing because at the end of the day, if we wait for merge all the features at once, it will be very difficult and the more often we integrate the less difficult it becomes usually and continuous delivery is where all the source stage build stage is happening and apart from that we do testing as well in continuous delivery once we get the build passed in we run the test like we talked in the release process before and can you see a gate is there because in continuous delivery we don't do automate, automate deployments to an environment and if a developer wants they can push a button and do a deployment but that doesn't usually happen because that happens in continuous deployment where we usually run all the release process stages again and do a deployment into a production environment or the staging environment. We do all this because we need to get from this to this. Uh, if you can see the workers are working manually and they do, they, they, they may even not know how the end car will become. And nowadays we do all things automated, they, everything is automated using robots and everything. This is what we are going to achieve in our software release today. Why does CICD matter? Uh, as we talked in the release process, a uh, software release process allows us to test and do all kind of validations to a deployment package because before it's being released to a production environment. And as we run tests and everything, we can find bugs earlier and faster. And if we find the bugs earlier, it's, they are much easier to fix and they are less costlier to fix. And we can do deliveries more often if we have a CICD process and also it unblocks developers because developers 
won't have to wait for long time to see if their build is passing they won't have to run the test manually and they won't have even have to integrate their feature branches manually and see if everything works because CICD pipelines will do them automatically and if you are talking about what is continuous integration a continuous integration as we talked in the release process source stage developers commit regularly to a central repository automated builds run test are run against code base and developers are given feedback based on the test and they can do certain code changes if the tests are failing and they can build, get the build running again and in continuous delivery successful builds are automatically deployed and automated and manual test are run and if everything checks out we can do a production release now that we know what is continuous integration and what is continuous delivery and deployment is let's talk about AWS code build and AWS code pipeline and how we are going to achieve CICD with these services AWS code, AWS code pipeline is a continuous delivery service and we can have several stages of deployment in a pipeline such as source, build, test and deploy and the, what the pipeline does is it automates software release pipeline and we can map our current man, maybe manual release pipeline into AWS code pipeline using its visual editor and everything and usually AWS code pipeline build, test and deploy code changes to a certain branch that branch can be our one of our main branches such as staging and production and AWS code pipeline easily integrates with AWS and other third party tools to do testing, to do deployments and validate our deployment. The, this is a, a sample AWS code pipeline and you can see several stages in it. This is where we model and visualize our release processes and customize workflow engine. And this visual editor allows developers and DevOps engineers to visualize what they are doing in their pipeline and make certain changes if they feel like it. And if you are talking about how AWS code pipeline works, developers changes and updates their code and commits into the source central repository and that triggers a build and the changes are built again and stay it the changes if the tests are passing they can be deployed and to a staging environment and tested and if all the tests are passing we can have a manual approval process where there we can generate a notification to the lead engineer or someone to approve and once it is approved production deployment can be done and the customers will see and they might give ideas fixes to change and bugs and then the whole cycle will start off again and that's usually the basics of code pipeline and if you are talking about key components of a pipeline first is the source and that's where a revision triggers, a, triggers the pipeline and it is configured as a source action we can have different sources such as github, bitbucket, aws code commit and then this is a stage, stages are source, build, deploy and we can have several stages, it doesn't have to be in this order anyway and a specific part of the pipeline containing a sequence of actions, that's what the stage is and an action that can be a task performed on an artifact on a stage, that artifact is taken from the source stage and action occurs in a specified order, it can be in sequence or in parallel this is a parallel action and once these two are done the test API run action will run and all these stages will have stage transitions and each stage will have artifacts moving from one stage to the other stage and we can even have custom actions apart from the default actions provided by AWS those custom actions can be retried and failed actions action stages and mobile testing, updating bug tickets and maybe updating dashboards or notifications and if you are talking about integrations 
to AWS Code Pipeline. AWS integrations can be AWS Code Commit, AWS S3. We can even get the source file from S3. That's pretty cool. And we can invoke logic between stages using AWS Lambda, and we can do deployments using AWS Elastic Beanstalk, AWS Code Deploy, and AWS Code Build. I have to say that AWS Code Build is not specifically meant for deploying, but in certain cases such as serverless deployments, we can do AWS Code Build and do deployments. And if you are talking about third-party integrations to AWS Code Pipeline, uh, it supports GitHub, and in build stage, it supports CloudBeast, Jenkins, Solano Labs, and in testing, we can use BlazeMeter, Ghost Inspect, and much more. And in deploy, we can use CBI Labs. If you are talking about AWS Code Pipeline benefits, um, one of the main benefits is we can configure the workflow and have a visual editor to our Redis pipeline and easily see and even we can share the pipeline to management because they might not have much technical knowledge and even they might be able to understand when they see the visual workflow. And it is easy to integrate with other AWS tools and other third-party tools to do our actions. And we can have rapid delivery, get started fast, with AWS templates and it's pretty easy to use and, and it's using the console it's just few clicks away and another benefit is we can have the pipeline manage as code and we can even have the pipeline de pipeline deploy itself as code from the repository And if you're talking about AWS Code Pipeline monitoring, we can have Amazon CloudWatch events, AWS CloudTrail, and we can even monitor the pipeline using console and the CLI. And there are several points to think about when using AWS Code Pipeline. These are some of the points I found out while using the pipeline. A job will hang until timeout unless we specify it if it is failed or not and transitions between stages are currently done through the pipeline itself we can't manually make a stage such pass and come to another stage and if you are talking about the CLI it provides more features than the GUI currently for example setting custom actions that can be only done using the CLI currently I hope they improve their GUI and yeah that's it about the code pipeline i hope you got an brief idea about the code pipeline and let's move on to aws code build aws code build is a fully managed build service that compiles code and run several run tests and produce software packages and it might be even do deployments if we configure the commands and aws code build can scale continuously as much as we want and it can run several builds concurrently. And one of the pretty cool things about AWS Code Build is we can have our environment as Docker images. We don't have to use the default Node.js and other Android images provided by AWS. We can define our own Docker image using our custom environment artifacts, softwares, and everything, and provide that to the AWS Code Build to be used as our environment when using builds. And other thing is as most of AWS services, we only have to pay by the minute of our resources. And if we optimize and configure the pipeline correctly, it will save lots of money. And if you're talking about how AWS code build works, uh, usually it downloads source code and execute commands configured in a build specification. Build specification is a file we maintain in our repository that tells us what commands to run in the code build process. We can specify several commands such as testing, building, and everything. And code build you streams the build output to CloudWatch logs and service console automatically, so we can see the progress of the build. And we can have 
a stage uploading the generated artifacts and cache the packages such as node modules so it won't download the packages over and over again every time it builds which will save time eventually and how to automate the release process with AWS code build and we can integrate AWS code build with AWS code pipeline for CI/CD and it is easily pluggable and API CLI driven. We can create a AWS code build project in about five minutes if we know what to do. Doing your own build environments, that's what I talked about before, that we can configure our own environments via Docker. And it even has open source Jenkins plugin. If you have an on-premise build server, the AWS code pipeline and code build will be able to trigger actions on that Jenkins server and get the output. And we can have code build as a workflow for Jenkins master in our Jenkins server. Now, if we talk about the build specification of a code build, it consists of several tags, it's a YAML file, and starts of versioning, it's 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. 0 0.1 differs from 0 0.2 because 0 0.1 commands run on E, uh, runs on a different terminal every time you run a command, and we can't have continuous command line in a one instance. But 0 0.2 fixes that and if we start a command line command line instance in a stage such as source, that command line instance will continue throughout the stage and we can have the current directory and everything continuously throughout the stages. And we can define environment variables and those environment variables can be configured in the code build itself or we can get them from the parameter in the EC2 systems manager which is kind of sec more secure than uh, defining them in the code build itself because we can encrypt the environment variables in EC2 systems manager. So this is an example version and env, ENV variable specification. Uh, here we have java home and docker login password configured and as you can see docker login password is taken from the parameter store environment variable and java home is set as a code build environment variable which is local to the build and code build specification it has several phases install pre-build build and post build inside these phases we can have as much as commands we want and every phase will uh, will have a finally command which will run even if the even if that phase fails such as uh, if we have a test trying in the pre-build or build phase even if the test fail we can have the final step running and generate a notification or cache the modules so this is a sample phase uh, we have install, pre-build, build and post-build and in the install phase we have several commands and after the commands we have a final stage which just says echo this always runs and like this we can configure commands as you want in phases and once we define the phases we can define the artifacts and cache uh, artifacts phase stage we can define which artifacts to be uh, uploaded to S3 or to be deployed if you are deploying within the code build itself and in the artifact stage we can define which file to take and we can even have secondary artifacts and this discard path yes uh, command will discard all the folders and paths and generates a artifact folder and we can even zip that folder and upload to S3 which is good and the cache stage will cache the paths we give so here we are caching the root.m2 path and if you are doing a node build we can uh, configure the node modules path here and it will upload the cache automatically to S3 bucket we provide and in the next build it will first download the cache 
and then run the builds and other commands we specify. Okay. And once we get our core build set up, uh, we need to monitor it. And we can monitor the AWS core build using several metrics, uh, which is CloudWatch metrics. And in the CloudWatch metrics, we can see how many builds were attempted, how many builds are successful, and how many builds failed, and how much time the code build is spending building and completing the pipe code build and even when configuring the code build we can set a timeout value and we can have a trigger saying that your build is nearing timeout and it's not building please check so this is a uh, some this is a sample graph from the aws code build console where you can see the duration and the number of builds uh, one thing to note is AWS code build console will only show metrics for the past three days and if you want all the metrics for the code build you will have to go to CloudWatch and get all the logs and analyze it. And we can set CloudWatch alarms to AWS code build and those alarms can be react if something goes wrong with the builds, if a test fails and developers or the authorized personnel will get the notification uh, when there are triggers and recently AWS team released the AWS code build local docker image uh, which allows us to run the AWS code build environment within our local machine and that brings uh, some pretty cool improvements to our development workflow which will allows us to test the integrity and contents of a build specification locally. Uh, without this, we'll have to man manually deploy our build specification file changes and see if the code build runs in the AWS environment itself. And we can test the application before committing uh, locally and see if the code build will pass. And we, uh, the code build local environment will allow us to identify and fix errors quickly from the local deployment environment itself and the developers won't have to wait until they commit all their features into the main branch to code build track. That's it uh, about the brief introduction of, uh, of code build and AWS code pipeline and now let's move into a brief demo which I will take you through uh, creating a code pipeline and code build in a sample repository. Alright guys, uh, we are in the AWS console now and we will create an AWS code build project and an AWS code pipeline project for this demonstration. And I have created a small repository for this uh, which has an API and a web frontend and that uses Angular and API is using serverless. And yeah, we'll start off uh, with AWS code build project. And once we go to the AWS uh, code build dashboard, uh, you can see your build history, your account matrix, and the Jenkins, Jenkins integrations you have done. Uh, but I don't have any of those, so I'll just create a new project. And once you click the create project button uh, you can configure all the aspects of your project and I'll just name our test project as test API and what I'm going to do now is uh, one have two code build projects and one code build project will run on each commit uh, so the developers can see if their commits are passing or not and other code build project will be used by the AWS code pipeline which will be create next and once when you're creating a project you can give a project name and a description and then you can uh, configure what source uh, you have to give to the aws code build and you can have several sources uh, AW, amazon s3 aws code commit bitbucket github and github enterprise and i'm going to use github today and i have already connected my account so it won't show connect github button but if I have to do the connection, then you can just click on that connect GitHub button and provide the authorization. And once you provide the authorization, you can see all the repositories on your account. And I have already committed 
the file so I can just select the project here and you can even choose the git clone depth and there's a report build status checkbox and that will report the build status back to the source control and when I click this, uh, this uh, in the AWS, uh, GitHub commit I can see if my commit is passing or not and there's another checkbox to rebuild every time a code change is pushed to this repository and if you are going to do a commit build uh, you will want to check this box because uh, once bo this box is checked uh, every time a developer commits into the branch uh, the code build project will run and when I check this uh, you can do a branch filtering because uh, you don't want to run this project every time a PR is merged into one of the main branches because we have different code build project and a different code pipeline for that so you can uh, just have a simple regex and filter out the, your main branches such as stay, staging, master and everything and I don't have those branches in the sample repository so I'll just leave this blank and you can even have a build batch which you can show the build, uh, show the build status of your project in the readme file of your source control and once you configure all those uh, you can move on to environment and in the environment configuration you can select whether you want to use a default AWS image or uh, in a docker image configured by you and uh, today I'm going to use uh, just a default image provided by AWS first you have to select in which operating system you want to run it on and the runtime you can have several runtimes in the default selection such as Android Java, Node.js, PHP and Python and I'm going to select Node.js because I'm going to use this on a serverless uh, deployment and you can select the Node.js runtime it has a uh, 3 runtime 6.3, Node and Node 10 I'm going to just use the latest version and you can even select if you want your build to run on privilege mode uh, I don't want that so I won't check it and now we come to the build specification file this uh, this is the build spec uh, file I talked about in the presentation and you can maintain this build specification on the code build project itself uh, where you can switch to the editor and configure the commands in the project itself uh, but it will be easier for you if you maintain your build specification within the repository itself because uh, when you are committing you can do some build specification changes and commit into the repository and you will have your code build running without any changes and if you are going to use a build specification file in the repository you can uh, give the path so my build specification is in the API folder and in the configuration folder within and I have two build specification files for release and the commit build and in the commit build I have uh, configured three phases install pre-build and build and in the install phase I have my node modules installed into the project and in the pre-build phase uh, I have my just test running and if the tests are passing I can build the uh, package build and package the serverless deployment and once the, everything is done uh, I can upload the node modules to S3 cache Okay, let's go back and configure the path. So it was in API and then config, then build dot yml. And then you can select uh, whether you want to upload the artifacts to the to a S3 bucket or not. Uh, I don't want that, so I just I won't configure it. But if you want it, you can select Amazon S3 and select a uh, Amazon S3 bucket and path and there you can select whether you want to compress your package artifacts and upload or not and also you can have a namespace such as build id so your artifacts won't get replaced once you are uploading them and yeah no artifacts for now and for the cache uh, I'm going to select Amazon S3 and a code build bucket 
to upload my cash on uh, I'll just upload it here hello world <laughs> next day. and for the pass prefix I'll just give API and you can have a life cycle event that cleans node module this cache uh, in a configured number of days so I'll just do 30 days so my cache will be cleaned every 30 days Okay, and then you can configure logs for your code build and this will allow you to have uh, in a CloudWatch matrix for your code build so I'll have a test API CloudWatch group name and a stream name you can just give the same name and you can select whether you want to upload your logs into S3 or not so I'll just give it there and then you can select the service role your code build to run on uh, I think I have created a service role already which is code build service role or else you can create the service role here itself and AWS code pipe code build project will manage necessary permissions for this role okay. I'll select the AWS code build service role and I have already configured the uh, service role so I don't want code build to manage it further so I just uncheck this and other thing is you can select a VPC for your code build to run if you have a private environment and you want your builds to run on a VPC you can select the VPC details and give the submit and other VPC information so the, your code build will run on the VPC and once you go to the advanced settings you can give a timeout for your build so I'll just give 10 minutes and the encryption key and the AWS code build uh, machine size so you can select from 3 GB, 7 GB and 15 GB of sizes I'll just select the smallest one because I, there's not much going on there other than building an node project once you select the compute type then we can configure environment variables for our code build project and there are several, two types of environment variables one is plain text and one is from the parameter store and if you would select plain text then these environment variables will be local to your code build and if you select parameter store you can get the environment variables from the uh, AWS EC2 param systems manager parameter store and even if they are encrypted you can read them here using your encryption key I don't think I have configured any environment variables in the specification so I'll just leave this back and even if you don't configure environment variables in the project itself if you have environment variables configured in the build specification they will be available for your project and you can have tags for your project and yeah, I'll just create the code bit. Okay, we have our commit uh, code build running, and let's do a sample commit and see if this is working. Okay, I just pushed my commit to get and and once you click the project you can see if your build is in progress yeah it is triggered and when you go inside the build instance you can see the console output from the build instance it's still provisioning so we have to wait a bit yeah and it's provisioned and it's downloading the source code and started and it's installing and this is the build output uh, from the code pipeline code build and it's running the command cd api running command npm install yeah, this is these are the commands I configured in the build specification 
and then now you can see fin it's finished installing API dependencies and it moved on to the testing API and it's running the just test and yeah, we, our test has passed yes and if the tests are failing this uh, phase of the code build project will fail and you can uh, set an alarm from the cloud watch and notify the developers or the other interested parties that this build is failing please fix it and once the packaging is done and it's uploading the cache to s3 and yeah that is successful and our build has succeeded and now if we go to the github repository you will be able to see that your commit is passing we have two commits and here this is the test commit i just created and when you see the build badge you can see it will open if you click on it it will move to the code build project and yeah here you have success build succeed after project test api so every time a developer commits uh, your code will be run and the developer will be able to see if his changes are passing or not okay and that is the core commit code build and we need another code build project for our code pipeline which will be used by the prs and that will be merged into our main one of the main branches so we can name this code build project test api okay something like release and once again we can select our source control use repository in my account and the repository and in this project you don't want your project to run every time a commit is made so i won't click this and all the other things will be the same node.js and node 10 and insert okay here i had two build specification files if you remember so one is for commit build and one is for build specific build release so in here i have another command running which is serverless deploy which will deploy the lambda function into our server aws environment previously this was just package serverless package see if our serverless project is packaging and now i will give the build specification part api config and our build specification name is build spec hills and once again i don't want any artifacts but if you want you can just select your s3 bucket and upload the artifacts there and you i can select if whether i want a cache or not and cloud virtual logs so why i didn't uh, uh, configure any cache for this because since this is a release pipeline i want everything to be clean and run on a new environment so i won't select any cache and no vpcs and i'll select the existing code build service role here and in the advanced settings i'll just give 10 minutes and same compute type and yeah we can save our code build and now we have two code build projects one is for our commit build and one is for our release and now we can create a aws code pipeline so this pipeline will be a release pipeline which will deploy to an environment so i just click on get started and give a pipeline name let's say test api release pipeline and once you give the pipeline name you will be able to give the source provider for that pipeline uh, unlike uh, aws code build you only have github amazon s3 and aws code commit here and i'll just select github and connect to github button and this will authenticate whether my github is 
configure and yeah I can select the repository and here I want and here I'll select in which branch I want this pipeline to be run on so if I merge a PR into master branch from the develop uh, dev branch so this pipeline will run on master branch so I just select the master branch here and you can even change the detection options but I don't think you'd want to because webhooks are much faster than periodically, periodically checking for changes so I'll just leave it like that and in the next step you will be able to select your build provider so we already configured our code build project for this uh, AWS code pipeline so I'll just create uh, select the existing code build project or else you can create a whole new code build project here itself so this is test API release and deploy so the interesting thing here is uh, since I'm using a serverless API and AWS doesn't support serverless deployment out of the box serverless as in the serverless framework deployments so I'll have to use AWS code build uh, they are in the build uh, stage to deploy my service but if you have other deployments such as AWS Cloud Formation or AWS Core Deploy Elastic Beanstalk or Opsworks you can select your deployment here and select other deployment information but since I don't have anything I'm deploying in the other stage I'll just select that I don't have any deployment in the deploy stage and here you can uh, create a AWS service role for the code pipeline I have a service created so I won't create a new role but here when, once you click this button you can create a new role and I select the code pipeline and yeah this is my pipeline and create pipeline once you click on the create pipeline your pipeline will be created and your pipeline will run there itself it seems and we can see if this uh, this is getting the source code from our repository and runs okay once that is done we'll go into some code build history I just want you to see how the build history works so seems like our code pipeline has triggered an API release code build so you can see the progress here and you can even see the history of all the failed and su successful deployments and in the account matrix you'll be able to see your dashboard so I have about 13 builds and the average duration is around 90 seconds and now number of successful builds are 9 and fail, I have failed builds so remember this is only for 3 days if you want uh, other metrics you will have to go to CloudWatch itself and once we go to AWS code pipeline we will be able to see our pipeline progress so it has taken the source from our github and now it runs the code build project so since we don't have a deployment stage here our deployment will happen on the build stage itself let's see if our serverless package is deploying oh god it's great I wonder why so type error this get stage to uppercase is not a function so now you can see our code pipeline is failing and we'll have to fix it and our error seems to be type error this to get stage to uppercase is not a function oh, okay we have a stage variable configured but I don't think I configured the stage variable in the code pipeline so yeah let's edit our pipeline and oh not the pipeline the build i think yes 
So let's go to our code build projects and test API release and any project. And there in the environment okay, in the environment variables, let's put stage and the value was dead and update our project. And once that is updated, we can trigger manual deployment to our code pipeline. So you can just go to the code pipeline and do a release change. So it will take the same source code from the GitHub and run our updated settings. Okay, it's in progress now. So like this here, uh, you can create different pipelines for your different releases. So maybe you have one release pipeline that is going on from staging to from QA to staging to your production or else you can have several pipelines so maybe staging API release, dev API release and production API release it's, you can just configure it any way you want you can even view the pipeline history and in the pipeline history you can see one, our first attempt of failed and uh, the other one is in progress now and if you go inside the pipeline we'll be able to see the progress yeah it has taken the source and it's building the source and if you go to the code build projects we'll be able to see our release project is coming yes and yes our tests are passing and now it's deploying the API It's running the command npx serverless deploy, which will deploy the serverless uh, framework project into the AWS environment. And yeah, you can see the progress, checking stack update progress. So once this is done, we'll be able to see if our API works. So if you remember, I had another project inside of my repository, which is a web. So like this, uh, I have two build specification configured for my web project. So in there, I have npm install and in the build, I have angular ng build command. So one, if you con configure this into a AWS code build, you will be able to see if your front end builds as well. And there, and I have another build specification file for front end release. So there what have I done is what I have done is uh, I have configured two parameter store variables which is S3 and CloudFront and S3 will give the S3 bucket name and CloudFront will give the CloudFront account ID. So there once I done with the build I can have a post build phase and that will sync my distribution folder into the SD bucket. So once I done that, my website will be automatically deployed. And then I have another command creating an invalidation to my CloudFront, so which will clear the cache and get my latest uh, front-end files for the public. So yeah, you can clone this repository and see if you can configure code build and code pipeline for your front end. And now let's go back to our code pipeline and see if it works. Yeah, our serverless uh, package is deployed and we have one endpoint. And if you can, yeah, yeah let's copy this and just, since it's a get method, we'll be able to see. Yes, so it returns a emoji <laughs> and yeah, I have been just some random things. So yes, our code build has deployed and yes, and test commit is done. Okay. So that's it guys. Uh, so today we looked at what code pipeline is and what code build is and how, can, 
how you can configure your release pipelines using these services and AWS has several other services such as AWS Code Deploy you can use for your EC2 deployments and other deployments I didn't use it because I was doing a serverless deployment but you can go ahead and check those out and I hope you learned something this from this webinar and yes thank you for joining